Right here is our medical assessment sheet. I'm going to break this down for you in such detail. You're going to know this cold. I'm going to literally hold your hand, walk through the whole thing, to understand the why behind it. Let's get into this video. I'm so pumped for you. Here we go. BSI seen safe is the first thing we're going to say in this medical assessment station. Real quick, quick disclaimer. I'm aware that NREMT at the EMT level is not doing practicals anymore. And that is relied upon your state. But the thing is, a lot of states are kind of just using the same sheets and the same model. So it's the same process. You're probably already using the sheet in class. So I'm still breaking it down for you NREMT style. Come on, let's go. BSI seed safe, first thing we do in the station. Now these are the five main sections here that we have. One, two, three, four, five. As our BSI seed safe, we go to scene size up. BSI body substance isolation procedures, precautions. We want to wear gloves, a mask, gown if we need it. You will know what to do based upon the dispatch information that you get, what we might need. We just want to say, my BSI is on. Is the scene safe? Am I able to clear? Yes. Okay, BSI and scene is safe. Great. Let me continue on. Then we go to the scene size up. I'm going to bring that down for you in a moment. After the scene size up, the scene size up is what? Think about, picture this. As the ambulance approaches the scene, what am I seeing? As I'm getting closer to approach the patient, not yet, but I'm um, pulling up on scene, here's what I'm seeing. Or I'm opening the door of the house, what am I seeing? Haven't got to the patient yet, but I can see the patient at a distance. That's scene size up. Primary survey, we're at the patient's right here, patient's right in front of me, and I'm going through my primary survey. I'm going through and looking for what are the life threats right now, what's something I, I need to manage right now, and I'm looking through the steps. I'm gonna break them down for you. Next, history taking. Those mnemonics there, breaking them down for you. History taking, get a patient history. And then we're gonna do a secondary assessment. Secondary assessment is not a rapid assessment, it's a detailed, focused assessment from head to toe, making sure we don't miss anything. Quick tip before we go any farther. Always remember to expose your patient in the primary survey. If I cannot see what's going on with the patient and the patient is not exposed, that I can miss a major life threat and then we'll fail. Don't want that. So always, we're doing primary survey, say, I'm exposing the patient, and then we do secondary again, say, hey, I just want to make sure, again, I'm including my patient while I'm doing my head to toe, don't want to miss anything. Got your back. Next is reassessment. We're going to reassess later on when we're transporting, and let's get into the finer details. Come on, let's go. Now, going through the details of the sheets, the best way that I found to go through the sheet is visualizing an actual call because that is why the sheet has been created so you know how to go through a call, right? The rhythm Beth is this. So what? think about this. We get our gloves on, we approach the scene. That is, a, when we said scene safe, we're clear to go in by dispatch, we go in the scene. This is the scene side up steps. Well, first get a point for determining the scene is safe. Great. Next, we have to determine the MOI or NOI from afar. So what this means, give me an example. Let's say in this scenario we're gonna do, we're going to a 60 year old male patient on the third floor in his home, in families on scene. He's complaining of chest pain, okay? And difficulty breathing. So that's the dispatch information we're getting. So we're gonna say, well, at this time, the patient from the dispatch information is complaining of chest pain difficulty breathing. So that sounds like the nature of illness could be something cardiac, respiratory, possibly we're looking at, could be a trauma, but we're not there yet. We're figuring it out. That's see, that the, the, the proctor wants to see you thinking. Big tip for you, verbalize. If you don't say it, the proctor cannot read your mind, you gotta get it out of your mouth, right? Next is determining the number of patients. They're gonna have one patient, but you never know. Okay, it could be some curveballs. So you want to say, okay, I'm I'm on the scene and approach the scene. I'm walking up the stairs to the third floor. I see the patient from a distance. How many patients do I have? I have one patient. Okay, got it. These two things are interesting. So requesting additional help. Why would you need additional help? 
Well, the additional help we have to play with would be like police for a violent patient, the fire department for, you know, rescue or extrications, um, other first responders because we need more help on scene. Why we need more help on scene could be with a bariatric patient, like a lift assist, right? But these are some reasons to think. Uh, also, additional help could be calling for a paramedic, right? Calling for a higher level of care, right? So these things I'm just thinking about, right? And then the last thing is considering spinal precautions. This is a medical assessment, so it should be medical. We just want to verbalize, hey, um, just so you're aware, I'm considering spinal precautions if I see the need for them to arise. With the primary survey, we're now in front of the patient and we're gathering our general impression. Here it is. General impression, what this is, we're going to approach the patient and we're going to say, hey, my name is Evan. I'm a paramedic. What's going on today? Ah, uh, you know, having some chest pain and having a hard time uh, breathing. Okay, I can see right now the patient is speaking in two to three word sentences. I see a little bit of breathing, complaining of chest pain. If the patient is alert and able to speak to me, I'm now going to continue with my assessment and start to expose the patient for my rapid exam. There we go. Now we're moving. What do we just do? General impression. What do you think is going on with the patient? You got to verbalize it. You could check for responsiveness and AFPU, alert, verbal, painful, or unresponsiveness in the patient by speaking to the patient. And you're going to see what level of responsiveness they're at, right? This patient was alert because they're speaking. What else does it mean if they're speaking? They got a pain in airway because they're able to speak, right? We'll do that in a little more in a moment. Chief complaint. We got chief complaint. What's going on today? I have chest pain, can't breathe. Right. What's a life threat that comes right to our head with chest pain? Heart attack. A heart attack. Right? But what else? Well, I'll just that's the thing critically for a minute. What else could it be? We're gonna get more information. What else could it be? Think about it. Could be a heart attack. Could be asthma. Could be a pneumothorax. Could be pulmonary embolism. Could be an aneurysm. Right? These are some things we start thinking about as we're going through our assessment. Could it even be anaphylaxis? Yeah, that has a hard time breathing. Right. Could it be COPD flare-up, a CHF flare-up? See, when you get better at becoming an EMT mech, you start to critically think. So think about these things. So, okay, but to figure it out, there's so many things that it could be. We figure it out by assessing ABC, our, our life threats, and then later on getting a history and asking more questions and tying it all together with science symptoms. Pretty cool, hang with me. So now we're gonna go and assess airway breathing, circulation. Why, what is the first thing we gotta do? Okay, I'm gonna move forward with a rapid exam. I'm gonna check, I'm gonna check for airway breathing circulation here. First thing I need to do is expose my patient. Is my patient now exposed to forming exam? Yes, great, okay, great. The big star here. First thing out you wanna say, Okay, I explore my patient. Do I see any major bleeding at all? Why do you want to say that? If we do not tackle major bleeding first, we're at risk of failing. Now, this is a medical assessment. There shouldn't be a major bleed. But if there is a life-threatening arterial major bleed, we got to tackle it. That's more trauma assessment, but I'm throwing it out there just to make sure we cover our bases. So we ask about that, and then we move on. So let's break this down. So with airway and breathing, we're assessing the airway. Oh, I'm gonna get into a few tips in a minute. Ventilation if we need to, oxygen. Which we, again, a quick listen to breath sound, a cool looking at the chest, not too detailed, but a quick glance. What about ventilation and oxygen? Well, what if this patient was unresponsive? What are the steps of ventilating this patient and giving oxygen, right? What are some signs and symptoms that we're gonna see on ABCs where we'd have to give oxygen? Blue skin, right? Not a pain airway. Unresponsive patient. What does that look like? Ventilation steps. Open the airway. That could be a head tilt chin lift or a jaw thrust. This is medical, so we can probably go ahead with a head tilt chin lift. Okay. Next. The next thing we're going to do is we, we open the airway. Well, I, I visualize the airway as I've opened it. Do I see any blood, vomit, secretions? We got to suction that out. Or we just drop an OPA or MPA in there. Then we're going to keep the airway open with an OPA or MPA. Then we're going to ventilate with a BVM attached to 15 liters of oxygen. There we go. So that mnemonic for you is open, clear, keep, and then ventilate. Okay. 
to assess airway and breathing. We're doing that. Give oxygen ventilation, circulation, talk about major bleeding. Oh, here we go. We're looking for major bleed. We're looking for skin, color, condition, the temperature of the skin. What is that? Again, think about that. Is it hot? Is it cold skin, right? Is it dry? Is the patient diaphoretic, sweating a lot? Blue skin, give oxygen, right? Think about that. Put what's the patient's pulse? High, low, where are they at? And then as we get this information, we're gonna make a transport decision and then treat anything here that we need to treat right now, right? So stopping that major bleed, for example, ventilating in our response of patient who has vomit in their way, clear that, clear that uh, airway obstruction. Get where I'm going with this? So now we're into history taking and secondary assessment. So the way I like to picture it is we took care of any primary life threats. Now we're getting a little more detailed, okay? And while we're doing this, we're getting the patient ready for transport or we're getting rid of it. It could be a scenario where we're already transporting and we're starting to do some of this stuff. So the main thing you want to think about is, again, visualize your scene. Who are you getting the history from? Is the patient able to give you a history if they're speaking? But if they're unresponsive, what an OPA and ventilated, is there somebody on scene that I'm going to get a history from? And or do we need a responder to go in the house before we go and look for a history? Right? So these are things that we can talk about. So first two mnemonics where you got to know. You got to know. O-P-Q-R-S-T. So O-P-Q-R-S-T talks about I have pain and I'm trying to investigate more. Sample history is getting a patient history, the history of the patient and of the event. So OPQRST, I'm going to break down first, then we're going to do sample. So first OPQRST, let's put that up on the board here. So OPQRST, O is for onset. So we want to think about what the patient was doing and at the same time, when did this all start? What kind of started this whole thing off and what were you doing when that happened? How long has it been too? That's like the onset. We try to get a picture of what happened when this first started. P. P is provokes. Has is anything provoke or make it better or worse? Right? That's what you want to think about. Has anything make the pain better or worse? Q is the quality. Can you describe to me what the pain feels like? Could you describe it at all? R has to do with radiation. I always talk about the region of the pain. So where is the pain? Does it radiate anywhere? Does it move anywhere? Where is the pain exactly? S is severity. On a scale of zero, you have no pain, or one, very little pain. To attend the worst pain of your life, where are you at right now? Then T is time. How long has it been since this started is one of the biggest things that you want to look at is time. How long has it been going on, right? So sample to put right here so as a sign symptoms a great question to ask in sample was i know you're having chest pain difficulty breathing it, this is actually one of the comments as well on the actual sheet it is associated sign symptoms with what you've got with opqrsd so for example if i think someone's having a heart attack a great follow-up question during sample with sign symptoms could be hey i know you said you have chest pain if you're breathing do you have any back pain? Do you have any nausea or vomiting? That, will, that looks great. That looks like you're on the ball because we know nausea and vomiting is a, a, a side symptom of a heart attack. See where I'm going with this, right? So they keep in mind, okay? So we're investigating the side symptoms a little more. Don't get crazy, but if you have something clear cut like that, that's cool. We have side symptoms, allergies. Here we have medications, past medical history, last oral intake, and then here's events leading up. So here is sample. Okay, so here we go. So what allergies do you have? Do you have any allergies to medications or food or anything we need to know about as far as allergies? M, do you take any prescribed medications at all? Do you take any medications? P is past medical history. Do you have any sort of medical history at all? You know, has anyone this ever happened before, right? L is last oral intake. When was the last time you ate or drank something? Don't forget about that. Then E, events leading up. So go through again. What exactly happened as this, as this started, that is pain started today? This is OPQRS and sample. So now we get on to secondary assessment. Now on the sheet for medical, what it talked about is you want to evaluate all the body systems. So if we go through all the body systems, some of them that come to mind, like, you know, digestive, 
cardiac, pulmonary. Basically what we wanna do, we wanna do a more focused head to toe. So you wanna scan the head, scan the neck, scan the chest, scan the abdomen, pelvis, lower extremity, upper extremity, posterior, make sure the patient's fully exposed and start to evaluate the patient through different body systems, lungs, digestive, right? Pulse motor sensory, eyes, head, neck, neck, right? JVD, any step offs, right? Getting lung sounds again, right? Stuff like this we want to check for with secondary assessment. So we go through and do all that. Then we scan from head to neck to chest to the yeah, even pelvis to the lower extremities to the upper extremities in the back, looking for anything we may have missed. And we're looking for secondary, secondary injuries or something that might cool us in and what's going on with the patient. Remember, one key thing that you really could say here that I like is I'm going to start with my secondary assessment. It's going to be a, a focus assessment where I'm going to go head to toe with the patient. I start at the head and work my way down. Really what I want to do here is I want to evaluate all these other body systems and do it in a more focused manner. So here we go. Oh, whoa, we're on the ball. Okay, come on now. What haven't we got yet? Vital signs. What are the main vitals? Main vitals we got to look at. Pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rates. What's the quality and what's the rate of respirations? And don't forget about things like pulse oximetry. Don't forget about how's the skin doing, right? blood glucose, gather all that, end title, grab it all, okay? So next we have the field impression and treatment plan. So what are you gonna do going forward? What is your treatment plan on this patient? What do you think you're gonna do going forward? What reassessments are you gonna do? We're gonna talk about that in a minute. What is your field impression? So what do you think is going on with this patient? And finally, the transport. So we made a transport decision earlier. Are we sticking by that? Are we upgrading? Are we downgrading, staying the same? Most likely you're going to continue to continue on to being high priority and then keep a high priority. Not a rule, but this is a scenario of trial what you're going to do. So we'll continue that. Again, you may even be retransporting, but we should continue to move forward. Now we get into reassessment. With reassessment, you're basically bringing it all home. Again, visualize the scene. You're transporting in the ambulance this time. You've done so much with this patient, got a lot of info. When you're transporting the patient in the ambulance, we're going to do some things. We're going to reassess. We're going to reassess treatments. We're going to give different treatments. We're going to radio patch to the hospital if it's a high priority call, right? We're going to continue to check vitals, continue to do exams. That's what this is talking about. So we're repeating the primary survey. So again, great thing to say, again, continuing to expose my patient as needed to perform my assessments. I'm going to just go back and reassess my airway, my breathing and circulation. I'm going to go back and make sure I'm repeating vital signs that is needed throughout the transport. What else are we going to do? We're going to evaluate for any changes in the condition, but also if anything changes after any medications or, or interventions that we've done. And then finally, the last thing we're going to do is repeat the secondary assessment as needed. And if we have time during our transport, now thing you can throw in there is, you know, during my transport as well, I'm going to radio patch in the hospital, make sure they understand and know what's coming to the emergency department. And that'll be that. That'll be it. And there it is. Now, a lot of you asked in the comments about how to prepare for school, how to get through school and how to pass NREMT. The first link in the description is a study tool that I give to all my students to accomplish all of that. It's called the Video Vault. Inside the Video Vault is over 480 videos of content, audio files, worksheets, practice quizzes, our community group. What I do in the Video Vault is take all the concepts you need to know to pass school at NREMT, and I break them down simply for you. So that way you just follow along with the videos, you follow the study plan, and you pass. I give my students lifetime access in the first link in the description and I'll see you on the inside.